from around the globe, it's theCUBE with digital coverage of Red Hat Summit 2020, brought to you by Red Hat. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE's coverage of a Red Hat Summit 2020. Happening digitally, we're connecting with Red Hat executives, thought leaders, practitioners, wherever they are around the globe, bringing them remotely into this online event. Happy to welcome back to the program, Joe Fernandez, who's the Vice President and General Manager of Core Cloud Platforms uh, with Red Hat. Joe, thanks so much for, for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, glad to be here. All right, so, so Joe, uh, you know, cloud of course has been a conversation we've been having for a, a, a lot of years. Uh, when, when I went to Red Hat Summit last year, when I went to IBM Think last year, uh, there was discussion of moving from kind of chapter one, if you will, to chapter two. Uh, some of the, 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 the labels that we put on things back in the early days, like hybrid cloud and multi-cloud, they're coming into a little bit clearer picture. So let, let, let's just give a high level, what you're seeing from your customers uh, when they talk about hybrid and multi-cloud environments, you know, what does that mean to your customers and, and therefore how is, is Red Hat uh, meeting them where they are? Yeah, sure. So, so Red Hat obviously serves an enterprise customer base, and you know what we've seen in that customer base uh, really since the start, and it's really informed our strategy, is the fact that you know all their applications aren't going to run in one place, right? So they're really employing a hybrid cloud strategy, a hybrid and multi-cloud strategy that spans from their data centers out to a public cloud, typically then out to multiple public clouds as their cloud investments grow, as they move more applications. And now even out to the edge for many of those customers. So that's the, the newest footprint that we're getting asked about. So really we think of that as the open hybrid cloud. And you know, our goal is really to provide a consistent platform for applications, regardless of when, where they run across all those environments. Yeah, um, let, let's click down a, a, a second on that because we've heard consistency for quite a while. Um, if you look at the, the largest cloud provider out there, they said, you know, hybrid environment will give you the exact same hardware that we're running in the public cloud and we'll put, you know, that in your environment. Uh, of course, Red Hat's a software company. You've lived across lots of platforms uh, for, you know, Red Hat's entire existence. So, you know, where is that consistency needed? How do you uh, think about how Red Hat does things, maybe uh, the same and a little different than some of the other players that are been, you know, positioning and even repositioning their hybrid story uh, over the last year or so. Yeah, so we're, we're really excited to see, you know, a, a lot of folks in the industry, including all the major public cloud providers are now talking about hybrid and, and talking about uh, these types of initiatives that, that we've been, uh, you know, talking about for quite some time. But, you know, it's a little bit different. When we talk about hybrid cloud, when we talk about multi-cloud, we're talking about being able to run not just in one public cloud and then in, in an on-premise appliance uh, you know, that mirrors that cloud, we're really talking about being able to run across multiple clouds. So having that consistency uh, across you know, running in say Amazon to Azure to Google and then carrying that into your on-premise environments, whether that's on bare metal, on VMware, on OpenStack, and then like I said, out, out to the edge, right? And so that consistency is important for people who are concerned about how their applications are going to operate in these different environments, uh, because otherwise they'll have to manage the, those differences themselves. Um, speaking as part of Red Hat, right? This is this is what the company was built on, right? Uh, in the you know 20 years ago, it was all about Linux bringing consistency for enterprise applications running across x86 hardware, right? So regardless of who your OEM vendor was, as long as you were building to the x86 standard and leveraging Linux as a base, Red Hat Enterprise Linux became that same consistent operating environment for applications, which is important for our software vendors, but also more importantly for customers themselves as they you know, put those apps into production. Yeah, I, I guess, uh, you know, last question I have uh, for kind of just the, the landscape out there. Uh, we've been talking for a number of years. When you talk to practitioners, they don't get caught up in the labels that we use in the industry. Uh, you know, do they have a cloud strategy? Yes, most companies have a cloud strategy. And if you ask them, is their cloud strategy the same today, same today as it was a quarter ago or a year ago? They say, of course not, everything's changed. We know in today's day and age, what I was doing a month ago is probably very different from what I am doing today. Uh, so uh, I, I know you've got a survey that was done of enterprise users. Uh, I saw it when it came out a month ago uh, and uh, you know, some good data in there. So, you know, where are we? 
Uh, and you know, what, what, what data do you have uh, to, to share with us on kind of the customer adoption and where things are going? Yeah, so I think you know, we put out a survey not too long ago and what we showed is I think over 60% of customers were, you know, were adopting a hybrid cloud strategy you know, exactly as I described, you know, thinking about their applications in terms of an environment that spans uh, multiple cloud infrastructures as well as on-premise footprints. Um, and then, you know, going beyond that, we, we think that number will grow based on, you know, uh, what we saw in that survey. That just mirrors the conversations that I've had with customers that many of us here at Red Hat have been having with those same customers over the years, because, you know, everybody's in a different spot in terms of their, you know, transformation efforts, in terms of their adoption of cloud technologies and what it means for their business. So we need to meet customers where they're at, uh, understand that everybody's at a different spot, and then make sure that they, we can help them make that transition. And it's really an evolution as opposed to, uh, I think what some people in the past might've thought of as a revolution where all the data centers are gonna set, shut down and everything's gonna move all at once. And so helping customers evolve uh, and you know, make that transition is really what Red Hat's all about. Yeah, and, and so often, Joe, when I, when I talk to some of the vendors out there and you talk about hybrid, you talk about multi-cloud, it's talking about something you mentioned. It's a box. Um, it's a place, it's, uh, you know, the yeah. infrastructure discussion. But, you know, when I've been having conversations with a lot of your peers, uh, these interviews for Red Hat Summit, uh, we know that, you know, it's the organization and it's the applications that are hugely important as these changes go uh, and, and, and happen. So talk a little bit about that, what's happening to the organization, how are you helping the infrastructure team keep up and the app dev team, you know, move forward? Yeah, So so first, uh, uh, start with the, the on the technology side, right? One of the things that that has enabled this type of uh, of consistency and portability has been sort of the advent of Linux containers as a standard packaging format that can uh, span across all these different footprints, right? So we know that Linux runs in all these different footprints, and Linux containers as a portable packaging format enables that, and then Kubernetes enables uh, customers to orchestrate containers at scale, and so that's. That's really what OpenShift is focused on, is delivering an enterprise Kubernetes platform, again, spanning all these environments that leverages container-based packaging, uh, provides enterprise Kubernetes orchestration and management to manage in all those environments. What that then also does on the people front is bring you know, infrastructure and operations teams together, right? Because uh, you know, Kubernetes containers represents agility for both sides, right? For uh, application developers, it represents the ability to package their application and all their dependencies and know that when they run it in one environment, it'll be consistent with how it runs in other environments. So eliminating that problem of works on my machine but doesn't work <laughs> you know, in prod or what have you. So it brings consistency for developers. Uh, for the infrastructure teams, it gives them the ability to, to basically make decisions around where the best place is to run these applications without having to, you know, think about uh, uh, that from a from a technology perspective, but really from things that should matter more like cost and convenience to customers and performance and so forth. Um, so so you know I think we see those teams coming together. That being said, it, it is an evolution in people and process and culture. So we've done a lot of work. Uh, we launched a global transformation office. We uh, had previously launched uh, Red Hat Open Innovation Labs and have done a lot of work with our consulting services to help, and our partners as well, to help with some of the people and process evolutions that need to occur to adopt uh, you know, these types of technologies as well as to move towards a more cloud native approach. All right, uh, so Joe, uh, what one of the announcements uh, made, made at the show uh, is talking about how OpenShift is working with virtualization. So mm -hmm. you know, I, I think back to the earliest container days, uh, there was a discussion of, oh, you know, Docker and containers, it kills VMs, or you know, cloud of course, you know, some cloud services run on VMs, other run on containers, they're serverless. So there's a lot of confusion out there as to, yeah. you know, what happens. We know in IT, uh, no technology ever dies, everything's always additive. Um, it's figuring out the, the, the right solutions and, and, and the right fit. So help us understand what Red Hat's doing when it comes to uh, virtualization and OpenShift and Kubernetes, and uh, how's your approach different than some of what we've already seen in the marketplace? Yeah, so so definitely we've seen just explosive adoption of, of containers technology, right? Which has driven uh, the OpenShift business and Red Hat's business overall. So so we expect that to continue, right? More applications 
moving towards a container-based uh, packaging and deployment model and leveraging Kubernetes and, and OpenShift to manage those environments. Uh, that being said, as you mentioned, virtualization has been around for a really long time, right? And uh, predominantly, uh, most applications uh, today uh, are running virtualized. Uh, and so some of them have made the transition to containers or were built uh, container native from the start, but many more are still running in VM-based environments um, and, and may never make that switch. So what we were looking at is how do we manage this sort of hybrid environment from the application perspective, where you have some applications running in containers, other applications running in VMs. Um, we have platforms like Red Hat OpenStack, Red Hat Virtualization that leverage the KVM hypervisor and Red Hat Enterprise Linux to, to serve apps running in a, a VM-based environment. What we did with Kubernetes is we said, how could we innovate to have convergence uh, on the orchestration and management front? And we leverage the fact that uh, KVM, uh, our, you know, our chosen hypervisor, is actually a Linux process that can itself be containerized. And so by running uh, the hypervisor in a container, we can then spawn VMs that could be managed on that same platform as the containers run. So what you have in OpenShift virtualization is the ability to use Kubernetes to manage containerized workloads as well as standard VM-based workloads. And this is, these are full VMs. These aren't micro VMs or uh, you know, things like uh, Firecracker or Kata Container. These are standard VMs. They could be full Windows guests or Linux guests running inside those VMs. Um, and so it helps you basically uh, you know, manage that type of environment where you may be moving to containers and more cloud-native approach, but you, those containers need to interact or you know, work with applications that are still in a VM-based uh, deployment environment. Um, and we think it's really exciting. We've demoed it at the last uh, Red Hat Summit. We're gonna talk about it even more here in terms of how we're gonna bring those products to market and enable customers. Okay, yeah, Joe, let, let me make sure I understand this because as you said, it is a different approach. So uh, mm -hmm. number one, if I'm moving towards a container management solution, this is going to fit natively into what I'm doing. It's not taking uh, you know, some of my traditional management tools and saying, oh, I also get some visibility in containers. It's more, you know, here's my Kubernetes solution and just some of those containers happen to be virtualized. Uh, did, did I get that piece right? Yeah, I think it's more like, so we know that Kubernetes is going to be in, in, the, in the environment because we know that, you know, people are moving application workloads to, you know, standard Linux containers. But we also know that virtual machines are going to still exist in that environment. So you can think about it as how would we enable Kubernetes to manage a virtual machine in the same way that it manages a Linux container? And what we do there is we actually put the VM inside the container, right? So because the VM uh, specifically you know, with KVM is just a Linux process, and that's what a Linux container is. It's, it's a Linux process, right? So you can, you can uh, run the hypervisor, uh, spawn the virtual machines uh, inside of containers, but those virtual machines you know, are just like any other VM that would run in, in OpenStack or Red Hat Virtualization or what have you. Um, and you could um, vSphere, for example. Uh, so those are traditional virtual machines uh, that are now being managed in a Kubernetes environment. Uh, and what we're seeing is sort of this evolution of Kubernetes to, to take on these new types of workloads. VMs is just one example of, of something that you can now manage with Kubernetes. Okay, and, and help me understand what this means to really the app dev and my application portfolio, because you know the original promise of uh, virtualization was I can just stick my application in a VM and I never need to think about it ever again. And right. while that was super helpful when Windows NT uh, was going end of life uh, in 2020, uh, we do find that most companies do want to update their applications um, and they are talking about, do I refactor them? Do I make them? microservices architecture, I, I don't want to have that iceberg of an application that I'm just dragging along slowly into the new world. So yeah. what, what, is, what does this virtualization integration with Kubernetes mean for, for the app dev and uh, the, the applications? Yeah, sure. So what we see customers doing, what we see their application development teams doing is modernizing a lot of their existing applications, right? So they're taking traditional monolithic applications or N-tier type applications that may run in a VM-based environment, and they're moving them towards more of a distributed architecture, leveraging 
you know, microservices uh, based approach. Um, but that doesn't happen all at once either, right? So, so oftentimes what you see is your microservices uh, are still, you know, connected to VM-based applications, or may, maybe you're breaking down a monolithic application. The core is still running in a VM, but some of those uh, business functions have now been carved out and containerized. So, you know, you're going to end up in a hybrid environment from the application perspective in terms of how these applications are packaged and deployed. The question is, what does that mean for your deployment architecture? Does it mean you always have to run a, a virtualization platform and a container platform together? Uh, that's how it's done today, right? OpenShift and Kubernetes run on top of vSphere. They run on top of Amazon and Azure and Google VMs on top of OpenStack. Uh, but what if you could actually just uh, run Kubernetes directly on bare metal and manage both types of workloads? That's really sort of the idea that uh, that you know, our OpenShift virtualization solution was based on is let's just, you know, manage VMs natively with Kubernetes in the same way that uh, we manage containers. Um, and then, you know, it can facilitate for the application developer this evolution of apps that are running in one environment towards apps that are running essentially in a hybrid environment from how they're packaged and deployed. Yeah, absolutely. Something I've been hearing for the last year or so that that hybrid deployment, pulling apart applications. Sometimes it's even, you know, the, the, that core piece, as you said, is on premises, and then I might have some of the more transactional pieces happening in the public cloud. So, uh, really interesting. Um, so, you know, how long has Red Hat been working on this? My understanding, Kubevert uh, is something you know I, I'm familiar with in the in the CNCF. Uh, I believe it's been around for a couple of years. Uh, yeah. So. Talk to us about just kind of how long it took to get here, and you know, fully support stateful applications now. What, what, what's what's the overall roadmap look like? Yeah, so so Kubevert as an open source project was launched uh, more than two years ago now. And as you know, Red Hat really drives all of our development upstream in the open source community. So we launched the Kubevert project. And we've been collaborating uh, with other vendors and, and even customers on that. Um, but then you know. Over time, we then decide, uh, you know, how do we bring these uh, technologies to market? Which technologies make sense to bring to market? So, um, so Kubevert is the open source project. Um, OpenShift and OpenShift virtualization, which is, uh, you know, what this feature is is referred to commercially, is the product that then we would uh, ship and support for running these in, in production environments. Um, the capabilities, right? So, uh, so I, th I think uh, those have been evolving as well. So, uh, virtual machines have uh, specific requirements in terms of not only how they're deployed and managed, but how they connect to storage, how they connect to networking, how do you, how do you do things like fencing and uh, you know uh, uh, all sorts of uh, you know, uh, live migration and that type of thing. We've been building out those types of capabilities. Um, There's certainly still more to do there, uh, but it's something that we're really excited about not just from the perspective of running VMs, but just even more broadly from the perspective of how Kubernetes is expanding to take on new workloads, right? Because Kubernetes has moved far beyond just running, you know, cloud native applications. Today, you can run stateful services in containers. You can run uh, things like AI and machine learning and analytics and uh, IoT <laughs> type services. And so, uh, but it hasn't come for free, right? That this has come through a lot of hard work in the Kubernetes community, in the various associated communities, the container communities, communities like Kubert. Um, but it's all kind of uh, trying to leverage that same automation, that same uh, platform to just do more things. And um, the cool thing is not just, it'll not just be Red Hat talking about it, but you'll, you'll see that from a lot of customers that are doing sessions at our summit this year and beyond, uh, talking about how, what it means to them. Yeah, that, that's great. Always love hearing the practitioner viewpoint. All right, Joe, I uh, want to give you the final word uh, when it comes to this whole space. Uh, it, it, things kind of move pretty fast, but also we remember it when we first saw it. So uh, tell yeah. us what's, what the customers who kind of walking away from Red Hat Summit uh, 2020 should be looking at and understanding that they might not have thought about if they were looking at Kubernetes a year or two ago. Yeah. I think a couple of things. One is, uh, you know, Kubernetes and, and this whole container ecosystem is continuing to evolve, continuing to add capabilities and to continue to expand the types of workloads uh, that, that it can run. 
Uh, Red Hat is right in the center of it. It's all happening in open source. Uh, Red Hat as a, a leading contributor to Kubernetes and open source in general uh, is driving a lot of this innovation. We're working with some great uh, uh, customers and partners, other vendors uh, who are working side by side with us as well. Um, and I think you know uh, the, the most important thing is under, we understand that it's an evolution for customers, right? So this evolution towards uh, uh, moving applications to the public cloud, adopting uh, a hybrid cloud uh, approach, this evolution in terms of uh, expanding the types of workloads um, and how you run and manage them. Um, and that approach is something that you know we've always helped customers through and we're doing that today as they move out towards, uh, towards embracing uh, cloud native. All right, well, Joe Fernandez, thank you so much for the updates. Congratulations on, on the launch of OpenShift virtualization. Definitely look forward to talking to some of the customers and finding out how that's helping them along their hybrid cloud journey. All right, lots All right. more coverage from the Cube at Red Hat Summit. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching the Cube. Thank you.